Okay, so once again, good day to each and every one of you. So for this uh, afternoon, is we will be discussing all about momentum and impulse. Okay, so now here, consider a particle of constant mass m. So because we have right here a, or the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time, we can write Newton's second law for this particle as, now take note that second law or Newton's second law is we have the sum of all forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, if we substitute the value of the acceleration, which is equal to dv over dt or the change in velocity over the change in time, so, Newton's second law now becomes, we have the sum of all forces, or the net force, F, is equal to the mass times, we have dv over dt, or the change in velocity over the change in time. So, we have, for the time rate of change, or d over dt, times, we have mass times the velocity. So, this will be our equation number one. So, we call this combination, this one right here, as the momentum or the linear momentum of the particle so if we will use the symbol small letter p for momentum so we have now our equation for the definition of momentum so momentum p is equal to the mass times the velocity of the particle or the object now take note here na si momentum is a vector quantity so again, it must have both magnitude and direction. Okay, so now here, substituting the definition of momentum in equation 1, the basic equation 1 is we have the net force, F is equal to uh, the time rate of change or D, or D over DT of mass times velocity. So if we will substitute P as mass times velocity, so now, the second law or Newton's second law in terms of momentum is now this one. So we have the net force, F, or the sum of all forces, is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. Or we have right here, Newton's second law in terms of momentum states that the net force, or we also have the vector sum of all forces, which is this one, acting on a particle, is equal to the time rate of change. So when we say time rate of change, it is d over dt. So the time rate of change of momentum of the particle. So that's why we have dp over dt. Okay. So now, diba si momentum p is a vector quantity, which is mass times velocity. So we can express momentum in terms of x, y, and z components. Okay, since again, momentum is a vector quantity, so we can um, break down the momentum in terms of x, y, and z components. So, momentum along the x-axis or P sub x is equal to the mass times the velocity along the x-axis. Then we have for the momentum along the y-axis or P sub y is equal to the mass times the velocity along the y-axis. And if we have the momentum along the z-axis or P sub z, it is equal to the mass times the velocity along the z-axis. Okay. So now, since momentum is a vector quantity, so the direction of momentum is the same as the direction of the velocity. So if you want to find out the direction of the momentum, you must look at the direction of your velocity because the direction of the velocity is the same as the direction of the momentum or kung asa padulong ang direction ni velocity dito pod padulong ang direction ni momentum so that's why when we look at uh, or if we want to find the direction of the momentum we can just look up the moment, uh, direction of the velocity so okay uh, velocity and momentum have the same direction or are in the same direction okay so now here, if we will consider again a particle acted on by a constant net force, 
or we have right here. During a time interval delta t from t sub 1, which is our initial time, to t sub 2, which is our final time. So now, if we want to solve the impulse of the net force, which is denoted by capital letter J, it's defined to be the product of the net force and the time interval. So we have here uh, the equation for um, the impulse. Capital letter J is equal to, again, the net force, F, times the time interval. Now, the time interval is also known as the change in time. So, that's why we have, again, when we say change, it is final value minus initial value. So, delta T is equal to T sub 2, which is our final time, minus T sub 1, which is the initial time. So, this is our equation to solve for the impulse of the net force. Okay. So, now, how about the unit for the impulse and momentum? Now, take note na P or momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. And also, see, impulse is, capital letter J, is equal to the net force F times delta T or the change in time. Now, when we look at the unit for momentum, diba, the unit for mass is in terms of kilogram or kilograms times the unit for the velocity which is meters per second so the unit of momentum so this will be the unit for momentum which is kilogram times meter per second whereas for the impulse we have right here the unit for force is in terms of newton or newtons times the unit for time is in terms of second or second so that's why for the impulse the unit is in terms of newton second so but we can interchange or we can use let's say for example we can use kilogram times meter per second as our unit for the impulse and also we can use newton second as our unit for the momentum kaya nga naman, it's because they are equal so they have different nga units kung tanawo na to siya but they are equal okay so now, take note na si Newton, di ba, we have force, Newton second law force is equal to mass and acceleration. If si Newton is for the force, ang equivalent niya is the unit for mass, which is kilogram, times the unit of acceleration, which is in terms of meters per second squared. So, kung Newton times second, so if we will substitute this one, so we have kilogram times meter per second squared times second, so, the second here will be cancelled out sa isa ka 1 over second sa 1 over second squared. So, for the impulse, ang yung unit is in terms of kilogram meter per second, which is again the original unit for the momentum. So, that's why we can use newton second and also kilogram meter per second as our unit for both the impulse and the momentum. Pero ang original gid nga unit for the impulse is newton second and the original unit for the momentum is in terms of kilogram times meter per second. But also, again, we can also have our unit for momentum as newton times second. Okay, so now, going back to the newton second law in terms of momentum diba ah uh, sorry diba newton second law in terms of momentum is we have the net force f is equal to dp over dt or we can also rewrite it as the change in momentum over the change in time so diba when we say change again it is final value minus initial value. So, we have delta P or the change in momentum is the final momentum, P sub 2, minus the initial momentum, P sub 1, divided by, for delta T, we have T sub 2 as our final time, minus T sub 1 as our initial time. Okay, so now, if we will multiply both sides with T2 minus T1 or delta T, now what will happen here? On the left side of the equation, we have 
the net force F times T2 minus T1 is equal now to, so makancel out na ni siya, P2 minus P1. Okay. So now take note na this one, ganing nasa left side sa ating equation, this is the formula for the impulse J. So J now is equal to P2 minus P1 or C impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So now, this equation right here is known as the impulse momentum theorem. So we have capital letter J or the impulse is equal to P2 minus P1 or impulse is equal to the change in momentum. That's why we call this as impulse momentum theorem. It's because it is uh, the combination between um, impulse and momentum or it involves both the impulse and the momentum. So, impulse momentum theorem states that the change in momentum of a particle, which is delta P, during a time interval is equal to the impulse J of the net force that acts on the particle during that time interval. Okay. So now we have, for the impulse and momentum, we have, uh, you need to memorize these three equations. So number one, the first equation is the equation of the momentum. Momentum is, we have small letter p is equal to mass times velocity. The second one is the impulse or the formula for the impulse which is g is equal to the net force times delta T, or we can also write it as the net force times T2 minus T1. And then the third one is our impulse momentum theorem. Impulse momentum theorem, which is we have the impulse is equal to the change in momentum, or we can also have it as P2 minus P1. Okay, so we just need these three equations for the impulse or the momentum and impulse because there are some form, uh, problems. Now, we can use these three equations in one problem. So, that's why I want you to memorize these three equations. First is the momentum, second is the impulse, and the third one is the impulse momentum theorem. Okay. So, let's look at some of the examples regarding with impulse and momentum. Okay, so we have here first example number one. You throw a ball with a mass of 0 0.40 kilogram against a brick wall. So, it hits the wall moving horizontally to the left at 30 meters per second. So, this is our initial velocity or the initial speed of the ball before it hits the wall. So notice here, this is our V sub 1 X because again, it is moving along the X axis. So notice na si V1 is equal to negative 30 meters per second. Now, ganong negative 30 man? It's because again, the motion or the direction of our initial velocity is moving towards or moving padulong sa negative x axis. So, that's why our v sub 1 or our initial velocity is equal to negative 30 meters per second. So, let's write the given here. So, we have the mass of the ball which is 0 0.40 kilogram and then we have v1 x or our initial velocity which is negative 30 meters per second. So, after it hits the wall, it rebounds horizontally to the right at 20 meters per second. So, this is after. So, now, our, initial, our final velocity is positive 20 meters per second. Again, it's because the direction of our velocity is on the positive or going to the positive x-axis. So, that's why si V2x is positive 20 meters per second second. Okay, so we have letter A and letter B for us to solve. So, for letter A, let's start with letter A first. 
is we need to find the impulse of the net force on the ball during its collision on the wall. Okay, so now our given values are the mass as well as the initial and final velocities of the ball. So how can we solve for the impulse of the net force? Now take note, we have three equations right here. We have the momentum, the impulse, as well as the impulse momentum theorem. So, which of these three equations shall we use to solve for the impulse? So, take note na impulse is J or the symbol for impulse is J. So, now, if we look at the given values, again, we only have the mass in the initial and final velocities. So, what we will do is we will use the equation of the impulse momentum theorem now why impulse momentum theorem now ang ato ang given is the mass and velocities man okay so take note na again ang atong ipangita is si impulse so di ba impulse momentum theorem we have j is equal to the change in momentum or we have p2 minus p1 so since again our, the motion of our ball is along the x-axis, so we can rewrite it as j sub x is equal to p2x minus p1x. Okay, so before we can solve for the impulse, we will be solving first for p1x and also p2x. So p1x, so momentum, formula for momentum is P is equal to mass times velocity. So, P1x is mass times V1x is equal to, we have our mass is 0 0.40 kilogram, times V1x is negative 30 meters per second. So, si P1x, if we will calculate this one, we have 0 0.40 times negative 30 is, we have negative 12 and then the unit will be kilogram times meter per second or again we can also have it as negative 12 newton times second so this is our p1x now how about for our p2x or our final momentum so p2x is equal to mass times velocity final velocity along the x so we have 0 0.40 kilogram times positive 20 meters per second so, we have 0 0.40 times 20 is we have positive 8 kilogram times meter per second or we have 8 newton second. Okay. So, now we have our values for P1x and P2x. So, we can solve now for the impulse using the impulse momentum theorem. So, for the impulse, J sub x, we have P2x minus P1x. So, substitute their corresponding values we have p2x is 8 kilogram times meter per second minus we have negative 12 kilogram times meter per second so our j sub x now so we have 8 minus negative 12 is equal to positive 20 kilogram times meter per second or we can also have it as 20 newton times second or newton second so this will be our answer for letter a again which is the impulse of the net force on the ball during its collision with the wall okay so now we proceed with letter b there na put the letter b now Take note na from the previous or from letter A, our J sub X is equal to 20 kilogram times meter per second. And then we have here for letter B, if the ball is in contact with the wall for 0 0.010 second, so we have given or gitagaan ta sa problem of value ni delta T or the change or the time interval which is 0 0.010 second. So now here, find the average horizontal force 
that the wall exerts on the ball during the impact. Okay. So now, what we need to find is the average force along the x-axis or the average horizontal force. Now, take note, we have the value of our impulse from letter A as well as the delta T. So, take note na from the, uh, from the equation of impulse, which is, we have J, is equal to the net force F times delta T. Or, again, since our, the motion of our ball is along the x-axis, so we can rewrite it as J sub x is equal to the average force along the x-axis times delta T. So, we can solve for the average horizontal force because we have a value for our impulse as well as our delta T. So, we need to divide both sides with delta T so that, makancel out ni siya. So, to solve for the average horizontal force, it is equal to J sub X divided by delta T. Okay, so again, we have the value for J sub X. We also have the value for delta T. So, we can now plug in the value. So, we have J sub X is 20. Now, I will be using Newton second so that it will be easier uh, for the units to be cancelled out. And then, we have divided by delta T is 0 0.010 second. So, notice na, makancel out si second in the numerator as well as on the denominator. So, we have now 20 divided by 0 0.010 second, uh, 0 0.010. So, the average horizontal force will now be 2,000 and then our unit is in terms of Newton or Newtons. So again, the average horizontal force that the wall exerts on the ball during the impact is equal to 2,000 Newtons. So that is for our first example. Okay. So again, this example is or the motion of the ball or the particle is moving along uh, one axis only. Now, how about if um, the motion of our object is along the x, both the x and y axis na? So, um, let's find out in our second example. So, for our second example, we have right here, a soccer ball has a mass of 0 0.40 kilograms. Okay, so let's write the given. We have the mass, which is equal to 0 0.40 kilogram. So initially, it is moving to the left at 20 meters per second. But then it is kicked. So initially, the motion of the ball, as you can see here in figure 8.7, before it is kicked, the initial motion of our ball is moving along the x-axis only. Okay, so we have V1 is equal to 20 meters per second. So, but then it is kicked. So, after the kick, it is now moving 45 degrees upward and to the right with a speed of 30 meters per second. Now, take note na, after it is kicked, the motion of the ball not only lies along the y-axis, but both on the x and y-axis. So, we have now our angle, which is equal to 45 degrees, and also our final velocity of the ball. So, now, our velocities will be on the x and y-axis now. So, we are not... Uh, dealing with single axis na, but we are dealing in both x and y axis na. So, we need to get V1x and V1y as well as V2x and V2y. Because again, we are not dealing with a single axis only, but we are dealing with both x and y axis na on this um example okay so let's go back to our initial velocity 
Now again, I have mentioned na before it is kicked, the motion of our ball is moving along the x-axis only. So meaning, the initial velocity ng 20 meters per second is along the x-axis. But take note, the motion of your ball is moving to the negative x-axis. So that's why <coughs> our v1x will be negative 20 meters per second. Whereas our v1y, since we don't have any motion or we don't have any velocity along the y-axis, kaya naka-horizontal lang man ang motion sa ito ang ball before it is kicked. So, our V1Y will be 0. So, but in our final velocity, it deals, uh, it has now a specific angle which is 45 degrees. So, for V2X, V2X is 30 meters per second times the cosine of 45 degrees and for v2y we have 30 meters per second times 45 sine of 45 degrees okay so now we have for v1 uh, v2x we have 30 times cosine of 45 is equal to 21.21 .21 meters per second Whereas, for V2Y, we have 30 times sine 45 is still equal to 21.21 .21 meters per second. Because again, the value of cosine 45 and sine 45 are the same. So, that's why we also have the same values for V2X and now V2Y. Okay. So, now let's continue with the problem. So, find the impulse of the net force which is what we did on the previous example so find the impulse of the net force and also the average net force assuming a collision time of or delta t which is 0 0.010 second okay so we have delta t which is 0 0.010 second okay so again as i have mentioned na we are uh, solving for impulse and average net force which is what we did on the previous example but this time we are now dealing with both x and y axis so still we will be using the impulse momentum theorem to solve for the impulse so we will solve first for the impulse and then we will solve for the average net force later on so we have impulse momentum theorem again is we have j is equal to delta p or we have p2 minus p1 but now instead of just one axis so we need to get j sub x and also j sub y okay so now here for j sub x Diba J sub X is P2X minus P1X. And also for J sub Y, we have P2Y minus P1Y. Okay. So now, let's continue right here. <clears throat> for J sub X, diba J sub X is P2X minus P1X. So take note na momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So, P2X is M times V2X minus P1X is mass times V1X. So, we have right here. Now, take note na we have a common factor or common nga symbol which is the mass. So, we can factor out the mass. So, mass times we have now V2X minus V1X. Okay, so substituting the values, we have our mass, which is 0 0.40 kilogram, times our V2x is 21, 21.21 .21 meters per second, minus our V1x is negative 20 meters per second. Okay, so now our J sub x is, we have 0 0.40 times 
21.21 minus negative 20 which is equal to so our j sub x is equal to 16.484 or 16.48 and then our unit again is in terms of kilogram times meter per second or we can also have it as 16.48 newton second okay so also for j sub y same procedure, we have P2Y minus P1Y. So, P2Y is M times V2Y minus P1Y is M times V1Y. So, factor out the mass. So, M times we have V2Y minus V1Y. Substituting the values, we have 0 0.40 kilogram. Times our V2Y is 21.21 meters per second. Minus our V1Y is 0. So, si J sub X is equal to, we have 0 0.40 times 21.21 which is equal to 8.484 or we can also have it as 8.48 kilogram times meter per second or we can also have it as 8.48 newton second. Okay. So now, we have already solved for the impulse of the net force of this soccer ball. So we are done with the impulse. Now, our, nest, our next task will be to solve for the average net force. So the same as what we have done on the previous example to solve for uh, the average net force is we will be using the um, so we have j sub x is equal to 16.48 kilogram times meter per second or 16.48 newton second and we have j sub y is 8.48 kilogram times meter per second or 8.48 newton second and also we have the value for delta t which is 0 0.010 second so to solve for the average net force so we will be using the equation of impulse which is we have g is equal to the net force times delta t so we have divide both sides with delta t so our net force f is equal to the momentum j divided by delta t okay so now for the average net force we need to get the average net force components which are the average net force along the x which is j sub x divided by delta t and we need to solve for the average net force along the y-axis, which is j sub y divided by delta t. So we have the values for j sub x, j sub y, and delta t. So we can solve for the average forces along the x and y. So we have j sub x is 16.48 newton second divided by 0 0.010 second. So again, we cancel out second. So 16.48 divided by 0 0.010 is 1,648 newtons. And then for the average net force along the y, we have J sub y is 8.48 newton second divided by 0 0.010 second. So, cancel out to second. So, 8.48 divided by 0 0.010 is equal to 848 newtons. Okay. So, now, we have our uh, average net force along the x and y. But, dili pa ni mao ang atong final answer because we will be getting the average net force or the average total force which is... If you can see here in figure B, 
mo na itong ipangita si average gyud nga total average force. So, given, as you can see, this is the average force along the y. And this one right here on the x-axis is our average force along the x-axis. So, notice na it forms a right triangle. So, we have right here. So, we have the angle, theta. So, this is our average force along the x. And this is our average force along the y. And this, is, this will be our total net force or the average net force. So, how can we solve for the average net force given the values of average horizontal and vertical forces? Okay. So, now... We are dealing with a right triangle. So, to solve for the hypotenuse, this is our hypotenuse. So, we will be using the Pythagorean theorem. So, Pythagorean theorem, we have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So, our C squared will be our average net force and our A squared and B squared will be our average horizontal force or Average force along the x and average force along the y. So, using this one, we can solve for the average net force. Okay. So, we have average net force is equal to the square root of average net force along the x squared plus the average net force along the y quantity squared. So, we have 1,648 newtons squared plus 848 newtons quantity squared. So, our average force or our average net force will be, we have 1,648 squared plus 848 squared. So, we have our average net force is 1,853.377 or we have 38 and then we have our unit newtons. Okay, so now this one is our magnitude. So we still need to get our direction since again we are dealing with the angle theta. So we need to find the value of this one. Si angle theta. So, how can we solve for the angle theta? So, to solve for the angle theta is we have, okay, we will be using tangent theta is equal to, diba, so katoa. So, for toa, it is tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, so let's look at the right triangle. The opposite here, if we look at or if we uh, look closely with our right triangle, opposite of the angle theta is our average force along the y-axis. And the adjacent of the angle theta is our average force along the x-axis. So, we have 848 <coughs> newtons divided by 1,648 newtons. So, this is our tangent theta. But again, makancel out si newtons on the numerator and the denominator. But this is not our final answer yet because we need to get the angle theta. But we have tangent theta. So, if to solve for angle theta, we have theta is equal to tangent inverse or inverse tangent times we have 848 divided by 1,648. So, our angle theta or the value of our angle theta, okay? So, inverse tangent of 848 divided by 1,648 is equal to 27. 23 or 228 degrees. 
So, this will be our direction. Okay. So, our magnitude is, one. Uh, the, our force magnitude is 1,853.38 newtons and the direction of our average net force is at 27.23 degrees. So, this one will be 27.23 degrees. So, this will be our force or average net force magnitude and direction okay so this is our second example so as you can see on our first and second examples the three equations the momentum the impulse as well as the impulse momentum theorem are being used at the same time or are being used in one problem so that's why I want you to memorize these three equations, which is the momentum. So, momentum is equal to, or P is equal to mass times velocity. We have right here. Let's go back. We have the impulse, which is equal to the net force F times delta T. And we have the impulse momentum theorem J is equal to delta P, or we have P2 minus P1. So, this is for our discussion, which is all about momentum and impulse. So, for next meeting, we will be discussing all about the conservation of momentum as well as the uh, types of collisions, which is the elastic and inelastic collisions. So, that's all for today.